Welcome to Courtside Moms. I'm your host, Wendy Sparks. Today, I have the utmost pleasure of being joined by <laughs> Christina Champagne, mother of Justin Champagne of the Toronto Raptors, of course. Welcome, Christina. Thank you for having me. So excited. Yes, absolutely. I am so blessed to have you here today to talk about your journey as a basketball mom. But before we get into all that, let's first hear about you. Who is Christina Champagne and what do you do? Okay. So who am I? I am a mother of three, three boys. Oh, okay. Soon to be 21-year-old twins, Justin and Julian. And I have a six-year-old boy. And I'm a school teacher. I'm a second grade school teacher. I work in a school in Brooklyn. I've been working, teaching for 20, 21 years. Wow. Yes. Did you ever school your kids? Were they ever in your class? No. They did not go to my school. <laughs> did not teach them. <laughs> Was that like on purpose? <laughs> Uh, probably. It, it, yeah, probably. But you know, you know, they went to school down in a different area than I worked. Yeah. I worked further away. So we kept them closer to home when I worked on the other side of Brooklyn. That's awesome. That really yeah. is though. <laughs> <laughs> you know, sometimes you're like, yeah, I can't have my kids in the, in the same school as me or yeah, somebody. There, they there, know. Are, there are teachers that do it now, you know, that have done it and they wind up taking their kids out. It doesn't work. Yeah. It's hard. Yeah. It's hard. <laughs> So now let's get to basketball. So yeah. at what age did Justin decide that he wanted to play basketball? And when did he start playing it competitively? So obviously when he was young, hmm. he started playing. But competitively, I would say middle school. Middle school, sixth, sixth grade was when I was like, we have to choose. Is it going to be soccer? Is it going to be baseball or basketball? I couldn't do all. I couldn't make every every game. So that's when he chose. It was basketball. And then we started with the AAU scene. And nice. from there, it went full, full fledged. It was wow. a lot of weekends, you know, a, a lot of trips, a lot of, a lot of practices, a lot of early mornings, late nights. And it was a lot of time. A lot of time went into it. You were bringing me back. You know, yeah. <laughs> fun times, though. Very fun. Fun. Yeah. 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 It's so funny when we see our kids coming to their own when we're on the road. It's different when it's a family vacation versus yes. now we're going to a game for them where they're playing. Right. It's all about them. It's just so right. different, I found, anyway. That's amazing, though. So... Justin is a twin, like you said. Yeah. You have another son, Julian. So tell us how similar or how different they are. They're very different. <laughs> very different. Twins, but very different. Um, I always say they are the way they play. If you ever watch them, mm. Justin is uh, rambunctious and loud, and Julian's more reserved and laid back. You know, Julian <laughs> has one face on the court. You know, you don't know if he's happy or, you know, mad, Justin just plays like he is, like angry sometimes, you know, he's a, <laughs> Julian's smooth, Justin's aggressive. That's so you have the introvert and then you have the extrovert, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> but they balance each other out. Of course. They balance They're twins. Of course, of course. So take us to Justin's high school playing years in Brooklyn. And then take us through what college recruitment looked like at the time and the steps you took to make that final decision of him going to his college. Okay, so he went to Bishop Lachlan High School in Brooklyn. And um, he started off on the freshman team. They won the championship the freshman year. From there, they moved up to varsity and I was in 10th grade. And then they didn't really get a lot of offers. In the beginning, they were kind of under the radar. They, they didn't, they weren't noticed that yet. Then probably 11th grade, when they went into 11th grade is when office started coming, school started calling the high school and the coaches and the AU coaches. And then by 
11, 12th grade, I would say it picked up right. and they were kind of like the, the guys on the team, like they waited their, t- their turn yeah. to become the next group on the team. And then it took off and then college came Yeah, and I didn't even, it just, everything came fast. Yeah, it does. It does. When they get those letters and I can imagine with two, it's like, oh, who do I do? What do I do? And yes. how does it come? And so at one point they did, they did their own separate paths and Justin committed to Pitt. So tell us about that. Like, how did he now come to that decision? What was it about Pitt that he said, you know what, this is a school for me? As soon as we went, I never forget. We went back to the hotel room that night and he was like, this is the school I'm going to. I don't care what anyone says. I'm <laughs> signing with them and I'm, that's my decision. And I was just like, oh my goodness, how am I going to? I was like, just you have to look at other schools. You can't just commit, you know, yeah. just let's think about it. But I also felt the same way. I'm not going to lie. I felt the mm-hmm. same way too. As a mom, you're letting your kid leave, go to college. And I just felt like that was the perfect staff. Yeah. I just watching them interact, watching us how they, you know, meshed at dinner. I just felt like Justin goes off of comfort. And I felt like that that was a good a a, a good fit for him. And that's what you want, right? When you're driving away, you want to feel comfortable saying, okay, you know what? My child's gonna be okay here. Right. You know and I mean? that's because, how I felt. Yep. They're living the life there. And then not only like we went on the on the visit they also welcomed my one and a half year old at the time. So just watching all of that and meeting their families, I, I just felt like it, it could work. And at the end of the day, it was his decision. So if it didn't work, it was a decision that he made. Well, and thank oh, God. Yeah, yeah, see? <laughs> but you know what? Out. That's important. Yeah, that is so important. Because like you said, they welcomed even your youngest son. You know what yes. I mean? And People might say, oh, you know what, that it doesn't matter. Yes, it does. Because oh, as does. a parent, as a parent, when you're sitting there and they're welcoming you and everybody versus just welcoming your that the player, it's a different dynamic. Yeah. You're driving away like, oh, okay, I'll see you. You know what I mean? I'll come see you play whenever right. versus I can't wait to get back to the school. And you know what I mean? Right. Yeah. And, and I just felt like, you know, they didn't promise him the world. You know, they, they told him the truth. Yep. There's minutes here. You know, it's up to you to get the minutes. No one sold him a story. They were very upfront and honest with him. And what else can you ask for? Yeah. That's how I felt. So what were those games like for you watching him play at Pitt? Okay. So I did get to go there a couple of times. I mean, wa- watching him. Well, the first year was unbelievable. The second year was a COVID year. So it was oh, kind of difficult. But nice. we got to go to the game. We did get to go to the game. Uh, it was... I, he just blew me away in college. I have to say he, I remember going there. He didn't start. And, um, he was called me up and would tell me, I'm going to find my way on that, that starting five. I'm going to find my way on that starting five. And he did. And he worked hard and he worked. And it was just a great, a great experience for him. That yeah. pit. Good, good, good. I mean, to me, cause Kim went to mm-hmm. pit. So he went, yes, Ken went to Pitt and then he red shirts um, that following December. But I went to one game and, oh my God, I drove there from like Canada. And anyway, it was like 16 hours. But you know what? It was such a, a different experience for me because it was right. my first college game to watch my son play, right? So just going there, driving in the town, you know, meeting yeah. the students and stuff. It is, it is exciting for us as parents now that, now that your child is actually living there and you're going to the games and it's just yeah. different. Right. So I'm glad that, that you got and to experience the area. It. The area yeah. So yes, 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 yes. And, and it's good as a parent, like you said, you get to go and you have fun when you go watch these games yeah. and then I always look forward to the next one. But unfortunately, like you said, it, it's um, COVID hit for you guys. Yeah. So what led to his decision after two seasons to declare for the draft? Well, <laughs> so he did have a phenomenal season. Um, I, Justin is, um, you know, when he gets something in his mind, in his head, he sticks with it. And no one could tell him 
anything. He just mm-hmm. goes with what he feels and he felt that that was the time to go. Yeah. And, you know, we there was a lot of conversation going back and forth, even with the coaching staff. They were involved in the whole process. But I couldn't get through to him. That's That was his decision and he felt that it was the right time and it was time for him to move on. And, you know, all I, we did was respect it. You know, I love that you said that because sometimes these decisions are tough decisions to make, Yeah, but they have to be made. So in my opinion, sometimes it's best just to push forward, make this decision and live by it and try to make it work as best as you can. Right. Yeah. That's, that's all, you know, and I, the, the good part about the whole process was the coaching staff was involved. So I felt like, you know, I went back and forth with um, the coach and and with Justin and with the agent and everyone was involved. So mm. I just felt like, well, we could do a supporter. Oh, that's wonderful. So take us to draft night. Tell us about it. Who are you with? Where did you watch the draft? And how did you as a family handle the outcome? So his agent. Um, had it at a restaurant in Manhattan. It was really nice. He had all the clients there and each uh, client invited their family. So, you know, we were all there close, you know, immediate family and some of his coaches and his name wasn't called. And I, I mean, this was the first time I was going through this. So I remember my eyes just filled up with tears I looked over at him his eyes were full of tears and I was just like oh my goodness his name is not going to be called I think we got to like 50 something at the time and and I was just like oh my goodness and as this was going on his agent walked kept going back and forth over to my husband over to Justin and um you know they were negotiating something and then before like right when the draft ended, the last call, he came over with a Toronto Raptors hat. And I was totally confused because now I'm learning what a two-way is. And I didn't yes. know. I yes. mean, I knew, but yeah, I didn't know, you know? Yes. And um, so I was like, oh my God, this is great. And, you know, and it was just a lot. Tears, hugs, smiles, everything. It was... It was, it was a night. It was a night. You know what? It's amazing that you guys had that outcome in the end. You know what I mean? Because a lot of parents don't, a lot of players don't. My son went undrafted. Right. There was no offer that same night at all. Yeah. He made his way to the NBA three years later. Right. So, or two years later, but either way it wasn't, you know what I mean? So Justin was blessed that a deal was able to be made because sometimes the kids don't understand right then and there. It's like, what, what do you mean? My dream is not going to come true tonight. Some kids think it's done. you're like, no, 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 you can make it in the future. Yes. But sometimes it's not going to happen right now. So he's lucky that before you left that restaurant. We had, yeah, he had something. And I remember the agent, you know, I have a great relationship with the agent. I remember him coming over to me and he's telling me, this is a great, like after you go after a certain number, this is actually, so these are all things I was learning as I was going, I was learning. So we were, we were happy. You know, as parents, a lot of times we don't know or anybody as individuals, you really don't know the ins and outs fully. Right. So we're being guided, but a lot of these things you only experience, like you said, as you're going along. You have no idea. What's a two-way contract? Hold on a second. Is that, right. is that doable? He can get this? What does that mean? You don't know these things. You know, you're know, you living Google. it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I Google everything. Everything. <laughs> I didn't have Google back then. I don't, it was 2014, I'm thinking. I don't think Google was that hot, or maybe I just wasn't hot on Google. I don't know. One of the two. Either way, I wasn't Googling, so it was just like, what do we do? So... <laughs> so he went through that process and he got his contract. So naturally he would have played in summer league yes, with the Raptors. And I remember that I went to summer league yes, yes. Um, last year in Vegas. And I remember Justin signed, I believe was the day after Kim. Yes. And then everybody was at summer league. So 
what was that like for you now? I know you didn't get a chance to yeah. go to Vegas, but now you're watching your baby play on TV. Like, what did that do to you? And, and now that he's wearing an NBA yes. jersey, right? Because you thought mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. draft, yeah. right? you know what I mean? At one point, he's not going to be playing. And now, he, now he's playing. And now he's playing Summer League. Like, how was that experience for you now? I'm I remember just like my eyes filled up with water. Like I could, I could not believe this was happening. I was really excited, very happy for him, extremely happy. Yeah. yeah. Everyone, all, the whole family was watching. It was, it was nice. And his little brother is his biggest fan. Oh, his crazy. biggest fan. So now he goes to play with the Raptors, and they were in Tampa first before moving back to Canada just a short couple of months after that. And then a few months after that, everything shut down in Canada and they were playing without fans. So did you get a chance to sneak in and get a game in at the Scotiabank Arena first before everything got shut down? No, I did not get to go there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yet. unfortunately, you didn't get to see him play at the Scotiabank Arena. Did he share what it was like, though, for him to play in an empty arena? Well, I know he just, he said it was different. It was different compared to what the arena is, what people, what a crowd there. Yeah. But, I mean, I was happy watching him either way, in an empty yeah. arena or a full arena. It didn't matter, eh? Yes. You know what? I can copy that feeling. because. I was so proud of my son. And then I'm sitting there in the arena and it was full, full, full. And then I'm sitting in the arena after and it was nobody in there. Nobody, mm-hmm. zero, zip. Only the family were allowed to come. And there was times where there was zero, like nobody in there. Right. And, you know, you're just proud anyway. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And for me, that was that opportunity to get to know all the right. players. Cedar you know I mean? And that's, yes. I was like, who's Justin? You know, who's this kid? You know? <laughs> And I would ask, you know, my, you know, I would ask Cam, you know what I mean? Well, who's this player? And he would tell me. And 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 Cam just thinks that Justin's such a great, great individual. So I know that Justin um, has mentors on the team. Does he tell you who mentors him and who he speaks to and who's been helping him so far along the well, way? I know, I know a lot of a lot of people mentor Justin, but I know some that he mentions of Pascal, you know, they share the same agent. So they're close. Yes. Kim yes. is one of them. And Fred, I believe he mentions and just to keep working, you know, take every opportunity, big or small, and just make the best out of it. Yeah. And I think he's doing it. He's trying. Good for him. Good for him. And again, now I'm saying, now you're watching him play NBA. Mm-hmm. What is that like for you? And are there any memorable games so far? Oh, it's, it's so it's extremely exciting to see him play on TV. I'm, it's very exciting, but I'll never forget this one game, and I'm watching it. And this night, my husband had to work, so I'm watching the game. And I'm like, this cannot be my son Justin that just did this when he tipped the ball in, and the whole arena went crazy. Mm-hmm. And number one, he played a lot of minutes that that game so I think I was more in shock that he was on the court for that long and then when he did the tip in I was like oh please make this count please (laughs) but it was just it was I remember I just the tears were just coming down my face like I cannot believe this kid is making his dreams come true so I I get chills (laughs) even talking about it I was at that game oh my god and I believe it was against OKC and it was, I think it was like 109, 110. And Justin just tips it in. Oh my God, the whole arena erupted. Yes. You couldn't even hear. I'll never forget, we were in the box just running around the place. Like, oh my God, Justin, Justin. And then all of a sudden, everything went quiet. 20,000 yes. people, everybody were like, what? And everybody left. <laughs> I know, I saw his face when you walked off. I was like, oh. But I feel like that was the game that yes. he made a name for himself. So yeah. make, make yeah. every opportunity count. You Absolutely. Know? Yeah. See, for me, I'm like, who's Justin? Oh, my God. Like, now yes. everybody's, like, freaking out. So it was such a good game. And you know what? He accomplished so much. He played so hard, hard. that game. So good for him. You know what yeah. I mean? At the end of the day, like I said, they're all winners anyway. You know what I mean? Yeah. You lose the game, so what? You know what I mean? Right. Uh, well, you right. probably won't like me saying that, but it's true. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, that was a great game. So – 
when Justin comes home and plays against the Knicks and the Nets. Yes, we're there. <laughs> How do we're you there. guys represent? So everyone had their jersey. We were all at the arena. Everyone was excited, screaming. Baby J was up late Aww. that night. It was, it was, it was a good, good game. Aww. And it was just so exciting to see him play for the first time, get on the Madison Square Garden court. It was, that was his first game that we got to see him play. So that was nice. Okay. Well, hopefully next season you will get the opportunity yeah. to sit amongst the Raptors fan. Hashtag yes. we the North. So far for me, they are the coolest fan base ever. I love, I can't love wait. the Raptors. Yes, yes. They will next, love you. Yeah. Welcome you in open arms. <laughs> so <laughs> We will be there. <laughs> that's right. So Justin's on a two-way contract and plays for yeah. both the Raptors and the 905. That within itself can be mentally and physically tiring. So in your opinion, what has that grind been like for him to always have to be available for both teams at any moment's notice, be ready to play, or sometimes be called up and not play? Right, right. Um, a lot of phone calls, a lot of, um, you know, talking after games, words of encouragement. And, you know, I know it, it was a struggle, I think, at the very end when he was assigned down to the 905, I think, for the remaining of the season. Yeah. And I remember some of the phone calls were like, I want to quit. I don't know if I want to play. You know, it it puts it, you know, a toll on you. And I remember another phone call he called me and he was like, playing down on the 905, brought the love back. And he needed that. Yeah. And he played hard. And you know, he had a good good run in the 905 at the end. And it is hard. It's hard. He's 20 years old. He's trying to manage all this. He's doing it by himself. Yeah. So whenever he complains, we listen. We tell yeah. him, just complain to us. Don't complain to no one else. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? But it's true. And I want people to understand that they're young. Yeah. So here they want to play NBA. Right. And sometimes they feel when I get called down, it's different. And you know what? It not necessarily is, right? So yes. it's mentally like, oh, wait, well, why am I here? They don't understand why they're being shuffled. And sometimes it's great because you're being developed. You're still in the organization. You're still where you should be. Right. right? Exactly. So I think it was just getting used to yep. your role on both teams. I think that was that was a challenge. Of course. Of mm -hmm. course. And you know what? Good for him because, like, he's so young. He has to get used to playing – the Raptors system, and then the 905 system. It's, you know what I mean? It's the same mm -hmm. organization, but it's still not the same team. They don't play the same, right? right? So good for him because he's learning how to play on both platforms at the same time at 20 years old. Yes. In one season. In one season. So, I give him credit. I yeah. always say give him a lot of yeah. credit. You know what? Thank God he's young because he's resilient and he's yes. tough. Yes. And later on in life, he's really going to appreciate this more and more. Yes. So this experience is relatively new for you. So please share with me how this journey has been for mom so far. Okay, so this was like, um, it, was, it wasn't it was easy, you know, uh, going through the whole agents, finding agents, you know, then going undrafted and to the NBA. This was, it was, it was difficult. I'm not going to lie. It was difficult. Yeah. The whole agent. So, you know, finding the right agent and, I'm, of course. you know, it was, it was hard. So I'm glad you said that. So let's speak to that just for a sec, because you've experienced this. So how important, in your opinion, is it to find an agent for your player? It's extremely important because Justin is only 20. So my... I didn't want to deal with someone where, you know, they were going to be my best friend during the process. But then when he signed with them, I couldn't contact them. So I felt like that was what I was looking for. Can I, number one, trust this agent, you know, because mm -hmm. you're putting your trust into this agent. And can I get in contact with him when Justin is struggling or when I need to know certain things or, yep. you know, can I pick up the phone? And he has been everything that I've asked for in an agent so far. And you see, I, I asked that for a reason, because I want people to understand that it, your agent can't be your bestie. 
No. You know what I mean? You mm-hmm. need a team behind you that, first of all, one doesn't know what the other one is doing. Everybody's yes. different and they're managing. Yes. You know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, this is Justin's career. This is his livelihood, right? Mm-hmm. And they need to work. They're working for him, but they have yes. to work with him. And, and, and he's so young. So they have to be able to work with the families as well, just to guide right. the kids along until they're at that age where they're like, right. or, you know, wait, thanks, mom, dad. You know what I mean? Now I think I got this. But right. in the meantime, our kids sometimes, they're so impressioned by, oh, yes. I have my own agent, but right. no. you have that wrong person behind you. So yes. it's so, I'm happy you said that because it's so important that we find that, that right person. Yep. And a good team and a good team behind you that you can trust. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Justin said that you commented about his hair. <laughs> mm. What were you thinking about when you saw his hair and you made him do something with it? I believe it was the Nets game. And I was like, Justin, you have to do something with your hair. Like, you cannot <laughs> go on the court like this anymore. And so by the next time I saw him, he had his hair done. And he's been keeping up with it. I, I love it. I couldn't believe when I saw it. I love it. I had to laugh when I saw that because it made me think of my mom. My mom, she's she gets mortified when she sees like some, oh. certain hairdos, and she asks, "Like they left the house like that?" And I'm like, I "Yeah," know. and she's like, "On purpose?" <laughs> like, <laughs> so when I saw that, I laughed. I said, "I have to ask Christina what made her just decide one day, Justin, please." <laughs> that Justin is a child. You have to constantly remind to do things. <laughs> so. In an article, Justin showed his appreciation for his family by saying that you are his biggest supporters and that you made sacrifices for him. So much goes behind getting our kids to the pros that a lot of people don't know. So can you speak to what he's referring to when he's saying my parents had to make, my family had to make sacrifices for me so that I can be in the NBA today? I mean... Was, I, I wouldn't take any of it back because I enjoyed the whole process of it from young up until college. But I mean, you want to make sure that they go to the tournaments. You want to make sure that, you know, they go to the AAU games and that, you know, they have money and things, things cost money. And, you know, you give up one thing to make sure that they have what they need to do this. And even as far as going to a private school, a private college, you know, dad took a job in the college, so they would be able to attend the college. Oh, not the college, sorry. The high school, Bishop Lockton High yeah. School. He became the soccer coach and he took a job there just to make sure that they got to go to a good high school and a private education. And it's just sacrifices all the way around, but they were good sacrifices, yeah. you know? Yeah. And, and, and it was worth it. It was worth I- it. I love that because to me, that's like, that's family teamwork, right? You're like, okay, listen, this is, this child here has this goal. What can we do to help him or her attain this yes. goal? So your husband's like, okay, this is what I'm going to do. You know what do I mean? It. And then you're like, okay, this is what I'm going to do. And I was a school teacher. So me getting out early allowed me to take them to their practices and games because of my schedule. So it helped out a lot. And their high school became like our family. Like, it's it, it, so everything worked out. So it was a lot of sacrifices, but it was all worth it at the end. Absolutely. You realize, like, okay, you know what? He wants to take, or, or my kids want to take their sports or their activities, their, their, um, a step forward. Let's try this. Some parents don't understand that. They're just like, oh, well, listen, you can't because I work until five and that's it. Right. Or you and can't because and it ends there. No, and all these dreams are gone. Where you're like, I no. knew, yes, we did it. We did it. They had a dream, and you know, we try to just help help them along the way. I mean, they did the work. We just helped guide them along. Yeah, and make yeah. sure certain things were help. You know, easier for them. What one word describes Justin as an athlete, and then what one word describes him as your son? As an athlete, I would say he's a warrior. He's he. he like a lion like that's what we call him that's exactly what we call him and he's just uh, as my son I would say he's humble he's 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 a good kid but as an athlete he's he's a warrior 
He's the a warrior. humble warrior. The humble warrior. <laughs> I love it. It's so obvious. I love it. I love it. So yeah. Justin's 20. Yes. He went undrafted. He still worked his tail off and still landed that job a couple of minutes later. So <laughs> yeah. what has he taught you about himself now that he is living in another country, away from his family and living his his dream playing basketball? Never give up on your dreams. But and you know when you know if you have something in mind that you want to do, go for it. That's what he's taught me. At 20 years old, he's taught me that. And I sit back to all the conversations that we've had and I just think about this is what he wanted to do. And he did it. Yeah. Whichever way it panned out, he did it. See, it, it's amazing because again, when I speak to my son or, you know, I watch interviews and I'm speaking to you, he seems like this resilient kid. He's tough. Mm -hmm. And he's like, listen, I'm going to do this. I want to be here. I'm going to get there. Yes. And there's a process and I'm going to do what I can to make sure that this process works for Justin. Yes. So it's no matter actually, which way, right? Yeah. No matter how yeah. it happens. He's like, I want it. I'm going to get it. So yes. that's Justin. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so earlier I was on Twitter and I posted to the Raptors family because they're fantastic. And my post said, let's have fun at Raptors family. Without disclosing yet who she is, at 7 p.m. Eastern, I'll be speaking to one of our moms. What is something you would want to know about any Raptor or 905 player? So I'm going to read you a question or two. Let me see. So at the LYL way, sorry. The question is, for non-Canadian players, what are some of the challenges they've dealt with when it comes to playing in Toronto? Well, not having your family yeah. available at the games, all the games, you know, is hard. That, that's a challenge, I know, because he's big on having family in the stands. So I would say not having us there, but we will be there this year. If yeah, God willing. It's tough. It's tough. It yeah. really is. It's tough. And we do whatever we can for our kids, right? Yes. Okay, let's see. I'll ask you two more. Um, at Steph underscore, underscore Scar asks, what other profession did their child want to pursue, if not basketball? Only heard basketball. <laughs> it's the only thing I've ever heard from him. <laughs> I even have his journal book. When he was young, Justin wanted to be a basketball player. Listen, he knew it. He, he knew, knew it from the start. Love it. And one more I'll ask. At Lauren Sinclair, did you know by age 10 or less that you had a gifted basketball playing son? Yes. I did. I saw it. I saw in both of them the work that they put in and how they separated themselves and how they gave up doing certain things, you know, for the practices and the early morning practices, late night tournaments, you're giving up staying with your friends, going to parties. I knew they wanted it. And I, and I saw it, I saw it was going to happen. I actually always knew it was going to happen. It's not something that something was going to happen. They were twins. They were tall, but something was going to happen. Love something. It. Love it. What is it like? being the courtside mom of Justin Champagne. Oh, so excited. I can't, I mean, I tear up when I think about it. I'm extremely grateful. I'm just over the moon happy for him and enjoying every moment of it. That's, Man. that's what you have to do. Enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah. Don't mm -hmm. let any moment go by that you don't notice. Right. I'm there. I listen to everything. I read everything. I cannot wait till I'm sitting there in the yeah. Scotia Bank Arena with you. Oh, I'll be there. <laughs> I'll be there this year. And we're watching our babies play together. Yeah. I will be That's there. That's going to be fantastic. We're going to sit amongst the fans. We're going to hang out. The fans are amazing. And they're, I, they're like just the coolest. Can't wait. I told him I will definitely be there this year. Yes. So let's learn some fun facts yes. about Justin. What is Justin's go-to dish that you make that he must always have? 
I'm going to let you know, guys know this. I am not the chef in the house. I'm not the cook. Dad is. But he loves my chicken cutlets and pasta. I think I make the best chicken cutlets in the house. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. What is one childhood item he couldn't live without other than a basketball? Nerf guns. Him and his brother always played with Nerf guns. There was Nerf guns everywhere, bullets everywhere. The both of them did that all the time. Besides basketball and playing in the park, they were playing with Nerf guns. Wow. That's the first time that someone said that to me that I could think of. I love that answer. It was Nerf gun. Did he have a nickname? And if so, what was it? The Warrior. Everyone okay. calls him the Warrior, yes. <laughs> now some questions, advice questions for you. What advice would you give to another courtside mom about dealing with a coaching decision that she does not agree with? Um, well, I don't, I don't get involved with coaching situations. I, that's not my thing. I teach. Um, let, I would say let your child figure things out for themselves and just, in, you know, enjoy it. Just just enjoy this, you know, let the coaches coach and just hope that, you know, they, you know, they make the right decision for your child. Yeah. That's, I don't get involved with coaching stuff. Yeah. I'll be honest with you. I, yeah. Yeah. I'm and in my opinion, we shouldn't. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so what advice well, would you, we can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, quite, of course. Of it. course. <laughs> Under your breath, you can sit there and say all these right. things, you know what I mean? But. Right. Yeah, there's been games where I've been and I'm like, <laughs> but I see some parents flying off the handle and no. running down the bleachers or running up and down no. the arena, but it's like, whew, okay. No, I've been at AAU games where that took place. No, I don't. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and they're meeting everybody in the parking lot. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what advice would you give to a player on how to deal with a tough teammate? Try to get to know each other. You know, even like sometimes off the court, I think a lot of times it's personalities and everyone has a different personality. And I think off the court bonding helps, yeah. you know, it's just so you get to know the person when you're on the court with them and you kind of don't take things so personally. I think that's that that can help. That's great. Advice. Team bonding, team bonding yeah. outside of basketball can help you figure out your teammates. That's a great advice. And my last question to you, Ms. Chef Haney, is <laughs> if you could only give one piece of advice to another courtside mom, what would that advice be? Sit back and enjoy this journey. Yes. It's, it is a beautiful journey. Just, just, just enjoy it because it's, it's, it's a beautiful journey and you don't want to take anything for granted. You just want to enjoy it. That's, that's what I would say. I love that this is so new to you and yet you have fallen in love with it already. And it's like you said, it's such a great journey when we look at yeah. our kids and you see their happiness, you see their sadness, you see the challenges, you see all the outcomes that are great and bad, you know what I mean? And it's, it's, there's so much that they go through. Yeah. And yet we just sit there and allow them to be adults and he's going to come into his own sooner than later because he's growing up. I mean, he's 20, but he doesn't even live down the street from you anymore. No. And he has a job. Our it's kids actually have jobs and they're making money and they're living and they're doing yes. what they want to do. You know what I mean? So I just, I, I love that advice. Like you said, just don't, don't forget, don't miss out on anything. Anything. Right, right. right. Like, Whether I'm, if I'm there or if I'm far away, just try to enjoy it the best we can. Yes. Oh, I love spending time sure. with you. And I enjoy it. And I will yes. definitely be there next year. I will be there. Yes. You have to let me know what yes. game you're going to. Maybe we'll aim for a home opener. What yeah. <laughs> yes, definitely. And I thank you so much for coming on Courtside Moms and spending time with me and, and teaching me who Justin is. I mean, I've seen him. I've seen him play all season long, but I've never had that chance to meet you or even meet him, really. So I love the fact that now you're teaching us all about more information that we didn't know but Justin Champagne. Thank you for having me.
Yeah, you want done, baby. 